right, back again, Dr. Bones. You probably know me as Dr. Bones, the Dr. Bones Science Show. Well, I'm also the juggling gourmet. The juggling gourmet, I can bring science to the kitchen, the kitchen to the classroom, talk about the science of cooking, molecular gastronomy, if you will. Today, we're going to build a couple of sandwiches. First sandwich I would like to do is the tuna salad sandwich. And I've got some ingredients here if you'd like to zoom in on that. We're going to obviously have tuna, and we'll have some celery, an onion, cubanelle pepper, bread, mayo, splash of lemon if you like, and perhaps some seasoning if you want. So those are the basic ingredients. All right, so before we go to the kitchen to prepare foods, make sure you've got some good soapy water, all right? So you've got your soap, dish detergent soap, and some nice hot water all part of food safety. Food safety is important. If these food safety hands aren't clear enough for you, well, we can always make them bigger, bigger and better. Okay, so there you go. So food safety, very important. Wash your hands before you're going to prepare foods. The first order of business is talking a little bit about tuna. We've got basic types of tuna. This is a solid white albacore tuna. So the white meat of tuna. And here we've got your chunk light tuna. Well, what is the difference here? The difference is, well, this one is obviously more expensive and this one is less expensive. This chunk light tuna has a variety of tuna in there. So that's where you're going to save some money by, if you're not too worried about the, the types of tuna that you're going to have, then that you can save yourself some money. This can be packed in water or oil. The albacore is usually in oil, okay? The albacore, if you look closely at the label, and my eyesight is not all that good, but I can still see some of these ingredients. One of them is called pyrophosphate. Now pyrophosphate, what on earth is pyrophosphate? Sounds dangerous, but it's really not. It's just phosphate plus phosphate to combine to form a diphosphate Basically, like ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which has three phosphates, or ADP, which has two phosphates, the pyrophosphate group is part of ADP. So don't worry about it. It actually is useful in the tuna. Really, it kind of disperses some of the minerals, excuse me, disperses some of the minerals so that they don't come together and form crystals in the tuna. So if you see slivers of, look like a little uh, micro kidney stones, that's because they didn't add the pyrophosphate. So instead of that, which by the way, that's not dangerous to eat, but the pyrophosphate keeps those, uh, keeps the crystallization at a minimum. All right, so the tuna. The tuna is what we're going to be putting together with the various vegetables. I've got my tuna in the cooler, so that's going to stay nice and cool. Keep things cool so that you don't have any foodborne illnesses. I've got some bread. I've got a roll here, basic roll. Cut this open here so you've got a nice roll. What I like to do with the roll, instead of putting this roll, for example, in the oven and baking both sides or kind of squishing it in a toaster, I like to keep the soft side soft and the inner side crunchy by putting it in a frying pan with a little butter so this becomes crunchy and very tasty. This is called the Maillard reaction. It reacts with the sugars in the bread and you get this texture and a crunch and a delicious flavor. So you can keep the soft side soft and the inside crunchy, all right? So that gives you a nice flavor. So that's the bread. Let's start putting some of these ingredients together. We're going to need the tuna. Got my mixing bowl here. Let's just pop in a couple of cans of tuna. I've got this distributed nicely. I'm going to pop that in there. All right. Yes, it certainly smells like tuna. Fish has a characteristic fishy smell. Tuna is probably the most popular of the fish to eat. Next on the list, let's see here. I've got some celery. Celery is fun to put in your sandwiches. It's also, as the juggling gourmet likes to advertise himself, he likes to do some juggling. So let's do some juggling. Here we've got our celery. The juggling gourmet wouldn't be the juggling gourmet without some juggling. So we've got the juggling with the celery. We can start to cut up some of the celery. What I like to do with the celery stalks, take a knife 
and split them down the middle. So I'm going to simply split them down the middle. I'm an ambidextrous cutter. I can cut with the right hand. I can cut with the left hand. If you're going to be doing a lot of cutting, ambidexterity might be useful for you. All right, so let's just move this out of the way and let's dice this up. All right, so we simply put them together. We're going to dice them up. Be careful with your fingers. Nice sharp knife, never use a dull knife so that you don't have to press down so hard with the knife. Let's pop that into our bowl. So we've got some celery in there. All right, next comes the onions. We've got some onions on the list here. Yes, onions and then the Cuban oil pepper. Onions, you can take a variety of onions into consideration. The typical yellow onion, although the yellow onion's probably more potent and it's going to be a little bit more difficult in, for example, something like a tuna salad, you want, might want to take a sweet onion, a Vidalia onion. So we've got some onions we're going to be putting into the tuna salad. All right, so we've got some onions. I've already diced up, here I've got my onion. I've cut it in half here. Got some diced onions. Already took care of that. By the way, when you're dicing onions, there we go. I've got the onions and the celery in there. When you're dicing onions and you don't want to have the sulfide compounds in the onion start to burn your eyes, take a nice little fan here. What I'll do is demonstrate this. I've got an onion. I'm going to dice it for you. I'm going to turn on this fan. With the fan, I can kind of blow away those sulfide compounds so that I don't have to incur them in my eye and cause them to start tearing up. So I dice across, or I should say I cut across, and then I'm ready to do the cross cut. And then you can further dice them as you desire to make them smaller and smaller and smaller. You could use a food processor as well. I just like having a little bit of onion in there. So that's what I would do. Just bring the fan over there. Some people like to light a candle. I'm not sure. Candles can be dangerous depending on where you're putting them. So the fan works nice. You can also wear some onion goggles, which are just basically goggles that you could wear in a chemistry lab or so on. All right, so let's just put those over there. At this point, we put these back in this container because they smell like onions. All right, very good. So we've got the onions. Next on the list, we've got the Cubanel or Cubanel peppers. These are nice. These are called Italian peppers, or Italian stir-fry peppers or banana peppers. These are nice. You can get green pepper, you can get red pepper. I like these as well. Let me juggle a few of these for you. Here we go with the Cuban El Pepper. They're delicious. They actually will turn red when they're ripe. In this case, they're not really fully ripe. So they're green. In this case, they will turn bright red, dark red when they are fully ripe. I'm simply going to cut off the top. All right. Take out the seeds here and start to slice them lengthwise, and then I can start dicing them up. So it's nice to be able to cut these up lengthwise and then cross cut. These are nice. I've cut so many vegetables over the years, it's a wonder I haven't cut off my fingers, but I try to be careful. So we'll die. Oh, what a lovely flavor we have here. And again, you can further dice them. If you like a chunkier type of tuna salad, this will be perfectly fine. I'm going to put that into my mixing bowl. There we go. If you've got too much vegetable, then you can always add a third can of tuna. I've got enough vegetables, I'm sure, for most people. And I'm simply going to mix this up. So a mixing spoon. Got a fork here. You can put a Italian dressing on this, certainly. That's certainly what you could do. Traditionally, people like to use uh, mayonnaise. So here I've got a real mayonnaise. Try to use the real mayonnaise as opposed to your store-bought mayonnaise. We call it real mayonnaise. It has egg. 
pig and vegetable oil. In another lecture, I'll talk about the emulsification of the egg and the oil. I'm going to take a look at my board here. Yes, I could probably splash some lemon in there. If you'd like to splash some lemon, you can certainly do that. You can do it after the mayo, you can do it before the mayo. The lemon adds a nice flavor, adds, adds vitamin C, ascorbic acid. If you want to get rid of that fishy smell, certainly slicing through a lemon, squeezing some lemon juice into the mixture can help out a little bit. I'm just going to squeeze in a little bit here. There you go. And that fishy smell kind of subsides. Let's put in the mayo. Got my mayo, I've got the big mayo spoon. I'm going to throw in a healthy portion of mayo. This is certainly something that you can feed several people here. This is at least four or five sandwiches in this mixture. There we go. If you like heavy on the mayo, you can always add the mayo later to the bread. We can always add a dose of mayo to each side of the bread. I like lettuce on here. I don't know if everyone needs lettuce on their tuna salad sandwich. You can slice. This is romaine lettuce. I'm just going to slice out the inner portion of the romaine. Right, so, oops, so I did that too fast there. Let's try that again. So I'm going to slice out the inner portion. It's giving me the leaf. You can actually use this for dipping into dips, but you have to throw it away necessarily. And I'm just going to put on a few slices of lettuce. Lettuce adds a nice flavor to tuna salad or any type of sandwich as such. And I guess we can see that here. Pop that on. There we go. A little bit there. A little bit more. All right. Pop on the top. Bottom them together. There we go. And there's your delicious tuna salad. You can cut that in half if you like. So the inner part of the roll is nice and crunchy. The outer part is 